Right, I'm the Irish taxi driver, and this, my friends, is Natalie Bennett. She is the leader, the leader of the Green Party. And I've got, I've got about a million questions here today. Right, privatised NHS, privatised education, privatised infrastructure, like our railways, buses, water, electricity, gas, postal service, judiciary, a privatised civil service. What is the point of a government? Is it just to collect taxes for the corporations? Well, that's the situation that unfortunately our current government is taking in. We have this model of privatisation, which of course has really been ruling for about the last three decades. And yet what we actually know, what we really know is the people who are using these services, who need these services, who rely on them. We know that this is basically built on three things. It's built on putting public money into private hands to private profits. It's built on cutting the wages and conditions of workers. And it's cut on, based on cutting the quality of services. And, you know, for the government it has one huge further advantage. When everything goes wrong... There's total deniability. Where's the responsibility? The minister says, well, you know, I'm sorry things went wrong, but it's all the private contractor's fault. And there's, we've lost the democratic accountability. And I think one of the things that wasn't on your list that's particularly important is the whole issue of prisons, probation service, uh, policing. And you, know, one of the things that we need to be saying absolutely is the coercive power of the state should never, ever be in private hands. But then neither should the railways, neither should the water companies, neither should all of those other things, because we know that privatisation is just a failed model. But but the, what I was saying was the government is fe it, it, it's a corporation. It's like Tyrell in Blade Runner. Well, I think I think what, what's happening is the government is sort of is basically trying to. We have a government that's ideologically wedded to the idea of a very small government. So you're right; they're kind of operating like as as the agents of the corporation. I don't think they are the corporation. They're simply the agents, ensuring that there's big profits going to those corporations. I mean, we we've got we've got a situation where where um, Arriva. Do you know Arriva? They yeah, run our buses. Coming. They run our buses. They run our trains, and they run our ambulances. Mm -hmm. Do you know who owns Arriva? Uh, it's what is it? The French? No, Arriva mm -hmm. is owned by Deutsche Bahn. Oh, it's the, it's the Germans, right? Yes. So <laughs> Deutsche Bahn yep. is a one hundred percent owned yep. by the public, by the German public. How? Mm -hmm. How? What's that? Well, I think one of the things that showed is one of the reasons why people sometimes give for opposing Caroline Lucas's private members' bill to bring the railways back into public hands is they say, oh, EU rules won't allow us to. I think that's the example but, but that proves is, that EU it, rules it do allow us to. It is in public hands. It's in the yeah, German... It, it, exactly. I mean, <laughs> they, they've got a revenue of £50 billion. Yeah, no, exactly. You know, I mean, what we, what we need is, is to have our railways run by us for us. And that's not what's happening at the moment. It's being run to create profits, as you say, for a German state-owned company. So, I mean, it, 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 we, I mean, it's a bankrupt political system, isn't it? Yeah, we have, we have a political system at the moment that's just clearly failing everybody. I mean, it's interesting, I was down at Balkham where there was a fracking protest and talking to a woman who was um, you know, from the next village down. And I suspect she might have voted Tory pretty well all of her life. But she said to me, and there were tears of frustration in her eyes, the system isn't working for me anymore. Why doesn't politics work anymore? And, you know, it's interesting when you have someone from Sussex from a very traditional political background feeling like that, and that's reflecting the views of people up and down the country. I mean, we have, um, we have the Liberal Democrats in coalition with uh, the, the, the despicable Tory party, and then we've got Labour endorsing government policies. Uh, we, they're saying we're going to be worse on welfare than Ian Duncan Smith, endorsing the, the heinous uh, bedroom tax and, and, and cuts in the welfare reform bill and, and workfare. Then you've got Tristram Hunt agreeing with Michael Gove. You've got Tessa Jowell and Chuka Amuna writing to the government to criminalise the squatting of abandoned commercial buildings while people are looking for somewhere to sleep. Yeah, and one of the things is the whole demonisation of squatters is ignoring the fact that the majority of squatters are people who simply are just trying to find somewhere, you know, we're sitting in the middle of, middle of a, the, the horrible, or the end of a horrible storm, you know, horrific conditions, and yet there are people out on the streets because they've got nowhere else to go, and that they should be criminalised for simply seeking a roof over their head. You know, it is absolutely horrific. And I think one of the things you haven't mentioned is very disturbing is the whole immigration bill that's before Parliament now, that the um, uh, that Labour is, is you know, coming out and backing, and we've got a real race to the bottom on immigration, the whole immigration rhetoric, and it's I really cannot, disturbing. I, I can't believe Labour are backing that. I've got, I'm, I'm going to come to that. So, <laughs> so 
Well, basically, so we've got a bankrupt system. What is the point of voting? Well, the point of voting is the fact is that, you know, the places where decisions are made is your local council, is Westminster, is Brussels. And, you know, I fully back things like Occupy, UK Uncut, you know, the kind of actions that we've been doing a lot to try and get the Greenpeace protesters out of Russia, all of those kind of things. All of those kind of actions are well worth doing and well worth supporting. But ultimately, the, what we need to do is get the right people into your local council, into Westminster, into Brussels. And that's the only way we're going to change things. You know, that's where decisions are made. And, you know, d democracy is where we need to be. We just need a very different sort of democracy. Well, I can guarantee you the majority of people that will be watching this, the people who watch my channel, they, 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 they will not vote. They're, they're not interested in voting for Labour, the, uh, the wars in Iraq. So, I mean... The, complicit in privatisation, they will not vote Tory and they certainly won't vote, vote Lib Dem. What are they left to do? Well, I mean, obviously I'm going to say vote Green because I'd urge them to look at our policies, look, you know, look at our manifesto, look at our policies for a sustainable society and see that, you know, all of those things like renationalising the railways, publicly owned and publicly run NHS, making the minimum wage a living wage, all those kind of things are in our manifesto. But what I would say is, you know, the real problem with not voting is what you're actually being counted as is... The kind of people who are happy enough as things are so they can't be bothered to vote. And that's where not voting really does get counted. Well, I, 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 I disagree with that. I would say that the, the more people that don't vote, the more people that stay... I mean, unless something changes radically... I mean, party politics has to be... The, the floor has to be... They, it has to go. We have to, we have to start thinking of a political system... That, that, that represents people, not corporations. We have to start thinking of a political system. Imagine we had 656 um, uh, individuals elected to a Senate where, where, where you had somebody else who, who they, or the group then in, you know, elected somebody else. Minimum term, four years. What we have at the moment is, is people vying for, for, for corporations and, and making money. It's a corpocracy, it's a kleptocracy looking for more wealth, more power for themselves. We, we have huge problems with the current system. What I'd say we have to do is reform that, which means you know some of the big things you can start with is getting the big money out of politics. I mean, half of the Tories' money comes from the city, the financial companies. Um, you know, We have a situation where, because of the first-past-the-post electoral system, huge numbers of the MPs over there in Westminster just behind us... Um, they're there in safe seats. I mean, you know, the, the old line goes that you can pin a red rosette or a blue rosette on a donkey and it will get elected. And, you know, if we went for a proportional representation voting system so people could feel like their vote would really count and, you know, if we have, say, say a 5%, you know, once a party gets over 5%, they get elected, then people can know that their vote will count. Whereas up and down the country now, there's lots of people who live in places that are very safe Tory or safe um, uh, Labour or, if there's such a thing, still safe Lib Dem seats, where for their whole life they can keep voting and never elect anybody. And that really you know, isn't right and can't continue. But we live in a, we're, we're living in a society of, 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 of greed that rewards greed. We live in a society where, where every single day rich people get to gamble on whether poor people eat or starve, what kind of a what kind of a society is that? Well, I, I think I mean that you're, you're absolutely right. And what's happening is the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. I mean, you know, the, a, the figure that I often quote is um, in 2011, the richest 10 percent of people got 12 percent richer. Top 10 percent, 12 percent richer. The rest of us got poorer. And that's something that simply can't continue. I mean, that's one of the things about our current economic system is you know we have a whole model setting out how we'd like it to change. But what's absolutely clear and certain is that it will change. It's not sustainable, it's not stable in its current framework because the money is being concentrated in more and more people's hands, concentrated more and more out of countries but in little tiny tax havens. And so what we have now simply can't continue. So it is going to change. And what we have to do is try and shape it to change it in the right direction towards more equality, more fairness, a situation where we're living within the limits of the one planet that we have now but where everybody has enough for a decent life. But uh, you saw a, a Grange mouth and, and the, guy, the guy who held mm. like, the whole country or north in Scotland to, to yeah. ransom, he, 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 he come out of it with uh, a government loan, uh, mm. taxpayers' money. Yeah. He made the deal from his yacht, a billionaire that, yeah. that, that puts his profits offshore. I mean, they, these are the people that are running the country. David Cameron, he was, they were laughing at the way mm. that the unions backed down. Can you imagine? They, they're the ones that went on strike. 
Mm. He went on strike. He said, well, well, well I'll, I'll, I'm not going to give you any energy. Should have told him to get lost. And, and that's where, you know, the, the kind of structure of, of the total... We started off on privatisation. The total nonsense of privatisation is, you know, the whole philosophy. This is supposed to be introducing more competition and, you know, private sector efficiency and everything. But, you know, there you have a monopoly... It's allowing people to hold, allowing one person to hold the whole country to ransom from and his yacht. Can't be, well, from yes. his yacht. That, that, that make it particularly, you know, extremely annoying. But you know, he shouldn't be doing it from wherever he's doing it from. Right, I'm the Ice Sex Drive. We're going to come back in a minute. We got, we got, we got a lot more <laughs> questions for Natalie. <laughs> 